Good morning. Sorry about the angle. I'm trying to film discreetly because all around me people are arriving and parking so I feel a little bit self-conscious but I am just tucked away in my car. It's about 10 to 10 and I've just arrived at the Southern Wall Show at Newbury Race, Newbury Race Course uh, in Berkshire. Bit of a funny journey because it follows the exact same journey I used to do when I used to visit my dad when he was in hospital just before he died. So it always feels a little bit of a sad journey to me, but obviously it's going to be a really, really lovely day. I'm meeting up with several people, hopefully. So I'm going to meet my friend Sarah and my friend Kate and uh, also Emma of Eldenwood Craft, Nancy of Knit Zip Happy, hopefully, uh, Gaynor, Tales from Cuckoo Land. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, I, oh, and there's, I've made a list, I've got a little list of um, places I definitely want to go and see, stalls I definitely want to see, obviously I want to see all of them, but there's a, quite a big show and I'm only here for one day, I would normally go for two days, but I just can't fit that in this year, so I've got a little list of things I definitely want to get to straight away, so I want to go to the Threshing Barn, because I want to try their electric eel nanos, is that what they're called, their little mini spinners, I don't know why I've got it in my head that I want to try those. But I do. I've been spinning with a little drop spindle. Um, so, yeah, I just, it fascinates me. So, I'm going to give that a go. I definitely want to go and uh, to the James Makes Yarn Stall because I have never seen him vending at a show before. And his yarn's amazing. And I followed him for a long time on Instagram. So, I'm really, really excited to go and meet him. And I'll probably get all flustered and dribble a bit. <laughs> Um, I want to go and say hello to Witchy Crafty Lady, that's Al Al Almus. Um, I bought some gorgeous fibre from her last year, which I haven't spun up, but she did take the time to show me a few techniques on the drop spindle. And I feel like I finally got a little bit of success. Oh, someone's just walked past in a really nice uh, knitted kind of shawl top type thing. That's good. I haven't seen anyone else wearing knitwear, so that's made me feel a bit better. I want to go and say hello to Marcia at Yarns You Like and I definitely want to go and see Gail's stall at Gail Made By Me because I've not seen, I see Gail at the shows because she often helps Marcia at Yarns You Like but she's vending this year with her bags, her handmade bags so I'm definitely going to go and see her. Who else? Uh, oh, I've got some magazines to drop at the charity stall actually, I'm going to look those out in a minute. I want to say hello to the ladies at Wensleydale Longball Last time we saw them was at East Anglia Yarn Festival and there was cake. But, you know, I'm not going to... That, that can't happen twice in two shows, surely. <laughs> uh, Claire and John are here from Bird Street Yarn, so I definitely want to go and say hello to them. Hayley at Ducky Darlings, Joe at Pickle Lily, uh, and everyone else besides. I've probably missed loads of people out. Um, so I think I'm going to do things a bit differently. I'm going to start in the Berkshire stand rather than the main grandstand, I think. I'm by myself as well, I should say. Normally I meet my friend Sarah uh, to begin with, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go in on my own to a yarn show and film and hopefully give you a good little idea of what it's like over the course of the day. So come with me to the Southern Wool Show. I'm not going to be buying any yarn. Um, <laughs> famous last words. I don't intend to buy any yarn today um, because I'm really, really wanting to work through my beautiful stash uh, without getting distracted. But, you know, I think I'm wise enough or stupid enough to say that might not be a hard and fast rule that I end up sticking to. Let's see where the day goes. I've got my pat lunch as well. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to chat to you as we go around the show so I can give you lots of information about the vendors and anything else I can think of. I found my friend Kate in the queue, so I'm just chatting to her now as we walk in. And look, there's Marcia from Yarn Do You Like. Hello! I found James. Hi. Oh look, he's got a dodgy fringe situation. It looks gorgeous, don't worry. <laughs> it's because I got all excited. Very excited. And he's at his second ever yarn show. Yes. So I'm going to film his yarn of and show course. you how amazing it is <laughs> and how amazing his crochet top is. Uh, <laughs> I am such a dork. Honestly, how cringe was I? James is just so super cool and funky and I'm, well, I'm not. <laughs> I was pretty cringy all day, actually. So sorry if you spoke to me. 
<laughs> right, yarn. James dyes the happiest, brightest colours. Inclusivity is at the heart of his brand. I'll link him underneath. I'll link everybody that you see underneath as much as I can. And his yarn is just a delight. Look at it. This is James's bubblegum socks pattern and he has actually given a pattern as a prize to go with this uh, skein of gorgeous yarn that he's donated as a Strictly Sock Along prize. It's a Halloween colourway called Pumpkin Patch. More on that in the next podcast though, which will be episode 104, my August wrap up. I've seen James wearing that jumper on his Instagram. It's lovely. Okay, we are at Made By Me, which is Gail. She is Gail Made By Me on Instagram. And she also has a YouTube channel uh, called Life's A Stitch. And she makes the most gorgeous bags. She uses a lot of African wax print fabric. I love this pouch. That looks like me. Well, actually, I don't have brown eyes. It looks like my sister. She's also got a fringe. <laughs> Look at that bag. Oh, well, you'll see later what came home with me. Pickle Lily is Jo and her husband Ewan. She makes lots of lovely little educational things and gorgeous little project bags like this one. She gave me this little gift. Can't wait to open it. Here's Marcia again at her very busy stall, so I couldn't get in to have a proper film, but she sells gorgeous plant-based yarns. And now we're at the Lace Knittery. Uh, they're from Somerset and they sell natural dyed yarn plus fibres for felting and spinning and lots more besides, including this ruggly rug yarn. They promote traditional skills and ethical production. And I love these knitting needles with the little jewels on top. Demelza's Delights are from Cornwall. Fans of Pole Dark won't be surprised. They sell hand-dyed yarn and gorgeous stitch markers and I really, really loved their colours. <laughs> These were quite fun as well. Look how gorgeous these little Halloween stitch markers are. They're so cute. Seeing lots of yarn as usual that I wish I'd stopped and bought. I just want to go back. Here we are at Sewing Bee by D, selling handmade bags and accessories. It's always a gorgeous stall. Uh, there's hand dyed yarn here as well and stitch markers and she works alongside Beans Craft a lot on Instagram who makes these beaded stitch markers. They are so intricate. Look at that little car. Why didn't I buy one? This is some of their hand dyed yarn. Wait for Buzz Lightyear. Amazing! And some of their bags. It's always a beautiful stall. The quality of my camera work in this vlog is not up to its usual standard. It's a bit wibbly wobbly. I do apologise. I think I was overexcited. So here we are at Madrigal Yarns. There were some gorgeous yarns here and he had some really lovely samples on display as well. I don't think I've seen him at a yarn show before, but I say that quite often and it turns out I must have. So I think I'm just not paying attention. So this is the De Orsay shawl. It's £3.50 on his website and they also sell kits for it. So I'll link that underneath because it's lovely. Heartspun by Ruddy Chic. Uh, she sells Eco Yarn, which is 70% BFL and 30% Tensile. And the little crochet granny square top you saw there, this one, is her Tada top. Isn't that lovely? She does lovely patterns. And gorgeous colours and she's lovely as well. <laughs> Marmalade makes me think of Paddington Bear. Blue Fern Yarns is becoming a firm favourite actually and I don't think I've ever knit with her yarn so I'm gonna need to rectify that. It's Shannon from Norfolk and her husband Tom I'm a groomy cat there. Now this wrap is her own pattern. It's called the Bubble, Babbling Brook Wrap. And I'm pretty sure that these colours here are her last year's advent colours, which kind of makes me want to buy her advent next year because they're so beautiful. It takes 24 10 gram fingering weight or 24 20 gram DK colours. I mean, DK minis. <laughs> Yeah. 
Here we are at Ducky Darling's lovely Hayley with her beautiful hand dyed yarns from Derbyshire. They also had a sock knitting machine on their stall which was really interesting to see so they could like they were cranking sock tubes I think. Lots of fluffy floof. This is Wensleydale Longwall, a very, very busy stand. It was really hard to get in and film anything, but it was so lovely to stop and chat to them. And they had chickens on the edge of their stall. I found my friend Sarah, one daisy, and I found Emma. I'm trying to point at your face. I'm Eldon <laughs> And We're going to go and find some tea or coffee and something to eat. And there's mash and wool down there fleeces. I found Nancy. Hello. I was just checking that we weren't like in front of the toilets. <laughs> we just had tea so we're a bit warm now and yes. now we're going to go and look at yarn. We have to go shopping. Yes. Knits it happy. Canada. With no wine in your hand. No, I actually somebody gifted me a bottle of wine. <laughs> I, I, I have a bottle of Pinot Grigio in my bag. <laughs> let's go. I'm hoping so. Yeah. Right, let's head into the Berkshire stand heading past coastal <laughs> colours here. They sell one-of-a-kind colours in luxury fibres. It's just a riot of colour, their stall. It's lovely. Oh, and and now we're at the Threshing right Barn stand. So the Threshing oh, Barn are from Yorkshire, I think. Oh. They sell all things fibre, weaving, spinning, felting. I didn't film much here as my hands were busy, and you'll see why later. We'll come back to this. Twisted Yarns is Louisa and she's from Hertfordshire. I don't think I've seen her before, but like I said, I clearly am not paying attention. There were some beautiful colours and I love this Christmas one. And now we're at Bird Street, Claire and John. So we stopped here for a little chat and to look at the absolutely gorgeous yarn. This is another yarn I love and have never knit with. So again, I need to rectify this. There were lots of people getting their MCAL, their Stephen West MCAL sets here. So there was a lot of talk of colours and what do you think of this one? And it was a really lovely, friendly, sociable stand. Curated Yarn Co. is Stevie. Uh, she sells hand-dyed uh, yarn inspired by design, history and material culture. She let me choose a skein of her beautiful yarn as a prize for the Strictly Sock Along. Uh, Sarah and Emma were with me at this point, so they helped me choose one. And we went for this one. Marvellous Mrs. Maisel in these gorgeous saturated colours, pink and blue. She's also got quite a few Stephen West MCAL gradient sets, kits um, available, and she's got more to come as well. And she also sells merino and mohair sweater kits, and they're designed for things like the love note sweater, the ranunculus or summer tea patterns, etc. And you get two merino nylon skeins and two mohair. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Oh, I love that colourway. I don't know what it's called. Jenny at Wild Meadow Wool sells hand dyed yarn and spinning fibre and also sells accessories and she showed me how to use a supported drop spindle. Witchy Crafty Lady, one of my favourite vendor names of all time is Almus. She sells hand dyed yarns and spinning fibre and she also sells stitch markers and project bags and notions all at really affordable prices. Almus believes in keeping her prices really access accessible to everybody and she does such a good job with that and the fibres she uses are like Corridale and Poldale. Really really lovely. So we've got Gaynor and Kate, you were and a Emma and Nancy, we and Sarah <laughs> and Barbara. <laughs> she was on the last, the last one as well. And we're going to have something to eat. And I'm going to open my present yeah, from Joe. Oh, row, row, row yeah. your yeah. Sad hit, that's it. Sad hit. I don't like poo. No. I like it depending on how. It's... 
Are we filming? Smile. It's a photo. Oh, do I need eyeballs? <laughs> We're going to go. Gain has decided, along with me, that we might go and have another look at e spinners. It's the spare of the minute decision. I just yeah. want to be exactly like Ali. <laughs> and we might buy one. I might buy one. I tried. I tried it. I don't think I filmed it, but I tried an e-spinner, which is what I wanted to see. I haven't even tried it. I'm still going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> let's go and have a look. I feel drunk. I feel a bit drunk. I'm not. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nine o'clock somewhere. <laughs> right. I'm just going to turn it on. <laughs> so you already know what you're doing a bit. No, I don't. Oh, I love it already. Look, I've gone ever so skinny. It's so neat. Oh, Mine didn't look like that when I tried it. I may have bought one. More on that later. This is Angela Gardner's studio. She's from Morecambe, which is a place that I absolutely love. This is her geode uh, shawl design, and she sells kits for it. This is all made with undyed yarns this is amazing and all of these are her designs as well she's inspired by water and nature and flowers she has some really interesting designs and some gorgeous colors for her hand dyed yarn bluebell yarns is becca from dorset she sells hand dyed non superwash synthetic free yarns using natural british wool she even uses metal free staples. I was really intrigued by this. I didn't realize all of this when I was looking at the stall, but I found out when I was researching afterwards. So I'd love to see her stall again and look at it with that knowledge. It probably said that on her stall, I just wasn't paying attention. She also sells these gorgeous, cute little stitch markers. Look at the little Halloween ones with pink pumpkins. She on Mars is Natasha. She is one half of the show organisers along with Nick and her yarns are gorgeous. I'm getting one of those, the one that got away feels here with this one. Why didn't I get that? They were only £10 as well. Why didn't I buy it? She also sells wet felting supplies and fibre. And look at these skeins and then look at how they knit up in this pattern now i don't know what this pattern is but it's lovely and this lace weight shawl oh i just love knitting lace if i can find out the patterns i will link them underneath <laughs> gainer being gainer okay i think this was at the felt wildly stall and this made us laugh spinning because knitting isn't weird enough because spinning isn't weird no no spinning because knitting isn't weird enough the last stand we visited of the day was velvet sixpence they're from nottingham and they dye really intense tonal and semi-tonal colorways and they dye on yarn and on fiber as well the colors were beautiful and I love the name. So that was the last stand of the day. Out of the 85 or so vendors, I managed to get around 22, which just goes to show that next year I need to come for two days again. So let's get home, grab a cuppa, or in my case, a little glass of Prosecco and have a little look at the things I bought and acquired. Do excuse the angle and the weirdness going on here. I'm on the floor in my bedroom because Dan's downstairs watching. I've also got the hiccups. I think I'm overexcited because I've just been showing Dan all my purchases. So he's downstairs watching Master Chef Australia. Phoebe's in her room talking to a friend on FaceTime. The cat is making, we don't have a cat, next door's cat is making a racket in the kitchen. Hiccups. <laughs> So I've come up here and because I'm a bit overexcited and because I've spent the day with Nancy of Knit Sip Happy, I'm going to have a little chat with you and have a very small glass of Prosecco. Maybe that won't do my hicc hiccups any good. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to have to come back. Hold on. Okay, I've done my deep nose breathing, which normally works. So hopefully, 
hopefully that's dealt with the hiccups. <laughs> I honestly think I've just got myself so excited about yarn that I've uh, given myself the hiccups. But I'm gonna have a I've had a mouthful. I'm gonna have another one. Okay, let's get started. So I had my little list, didn't I, this morning of everyone that I wanted to see, and I'm glad to say that I got to see everyone, and it was amazing. So I'm gonna try and do it in the order of people that I saw. Because, but I probably won't remember. But the first person I saw as we were coming in the door was Marcia from Yarns You Like. She wasn't at her stall because she was on her way out. I think she was at, on her way out to take a photo. So we ended up seeing her first of all, which was which was lovely. She's she's just such a lovely human. So we had a little chat with her as on our on our way in. Uh, when I say we, by the way, <laughs> I should have mentioned. So I met up with uh, Kate, my friend Kate. Uh, she doesn't have a podcast or anything. We've got to know each other over the years. She's she's been a really lovely supporter of um, my my podcast and my channels, and she often donates yarn um, as prizes, which is so lovely of her from her stash. And uh, so I bumped into her on the way in. So I should start with Kate. I bumped into Kate on purpose on our way in, and we chatted in the queue and everything. I dropped off my magazines as I intended to do. I've got more as well, so I'm gonna have to uh, donate some more next year or find find somewhere else. I'm going off on a tangent and speaking at 100 miles an hour, aren't I? Slow down, slow down the excitement. So Kate, at some point in the day, gave me a bag of uh, yarn, which I will not go into great detail um, about because I will talk about it in the next podcast. Because uh, it's all uh, stuff for prizes for the Strictly Sock Along and it's amazing. And there's even a little 12 day countdown here as well. So thank you so much, Kate. This is utterly amazing. I'm thrilled. And she popped in one just for me because it's yellow. It's a sock set and it's by one of my most favourite dyers, podcasters and all round generally lovely person, which is Ellie at Craft House Magic. Uh, I'll link everyone I mention underneath if they are linkable. So that's Craft House Magic, and this is in her Don't Worry, Be Happy uh, colourway, and it's a sock set. So I think that's 20, is it a 20 gram, 50 gram? I think it's a 20 gram, 50 gram. But look at that. Look at those soft speckles. These are definitely, definitely going to fulfil their destiny as socks. It's a sock set and it's going to become socks. So thank you Kate for that beautiful gift. Thank you. Then we bumped into lovely Marcia of Yarn Do You Like on our way in. So we had a little chat with her. As I said, that was a really lovely way to start the day. So then Kate and her mum Bob and a couple of others went to get a cup of tea and I made a beeline for James Makes Yarn. So that was my next stop and he very kind. So James, I think it was his second ever show and I've never seen him at a show, but I've followed him on Instagram for a long time. He does the most gloriously neon, bright, happy, sunshiny colours. And he's a sort of neon, bright, sunshiny, happy person to sort of follow. And if you don't follow him, go and look him up. James Makes Yarn. I think he's James Makes Yarn on Instagram. He's not James Makes Things, is he? Hang on a minute. Yes, he's James Makes Things on Instagram, but his brand is James Makes Yarn. There we go, right at the bottom, James Makes Things. Go and look him up, he's amazing. That's his logo and you can get a little taster of the colour of his yarn behind there. It's, oh, it's just beautiful. I saw so many people walking around with yarn from him and oh, I was so tempted to go back, but I'd said I wasn't buying yarn. Now I'm like, shall I? Oh, no, right, stop talking yourself into going online and buying yarn when you already were good and didn't buy yarn. He gave me a skein of yarn for the Strictly Sock Along as a prize, and he said, choose anyone you want. And that was really difficult. He had the most glorious colours. He had some lovely Christmas, uh, a lovely Christmas colour in, um, a, a lovely Halloween colour in, and then I spotted this one, and it had. This just had to be the one that I picked. It's just glorious. And I kind of wish I'd bought some for me as well, because I think this would just make the most amazing, like, ranunculus. So it's called Pumpkin Patch. Oh, oh I'm not going to be able to get this to show. It's so bright and neon, but it's blowing out on the screen. I'm hoping, sometimes when I say it blows out, when I come to edit it, it's not as bad. 
Right, I'm just going to hold this up and give editing me a chance to adjust the colour to make it more close to the actual colour. It's a lot more peachy orangey than I can see on the screen. It's probably better if I hold it back a bit. Oh, it's just so pretty. So that's pumpkin patch. You get 425 metres to 100 grams and it's 75-25 marine, superwash merino nylon. This is going to be a prize for the Strictly Soccer Long. So after James, I darted along to see Gail at uh, Made By Me. So I f followed Gail for, for ages. I can't, I, for so long, I can't even remember how I even found her, but I followed her on Instagram for a long time. But I normally bump into her when she's helping out on Marcia at Yarn She Likes stall. Uh, but this time she was there vending with her own store with her handmade bags and I really wanted to go and see her. I love what she does. I love it when she posts her bags and stuff on Instagram and I really wanted to support that. So I went along to her store and I was like, oh, I mean, you know, oh, I really like that one and I really like that. She, she uses a lot of African, um, African wax print uh, fabrics and I just love so much so i bought this thinking i don't i do not need any more project bags we all know one day i will do a video tell me if you're interested i'll do a video on my project bags because literally the amount i have is ridiculous and you know i'm not sorry for that i love my project bags and i don't need any more but i, I just needed this one and i talked myself into it thinking if i don't keep it for me i can use it as a prize can't i, I can use it as a prize for the Strictly Sock Along or something, but look at that print. Oh, I just love those colours. It reminds me a little bit of 70s colours, but also just, I don't know, it just seems really modern. And she's got this lovely, I love it when you get the maker's label. I just think that's a really nice touch. There's her, I just jogged the camera a bit there. That's okay. And on the back, it's got this really soft kind of, feels a bit like suede fabric and I can't, I'm, I'm really fussy about fabrics and I get a bit squeamish about things but I can't stop touching this, it's lovely. And you've got lovely canvas handles and then the inside you've got pockets, it's a really nice um, wide bottom so you get loads in there and then you've got these lovely pockets in this orangey heart dotted lining fabric it's just beautiful i'm so happy with this but yeah i might have to part with it as a prize um or i might just be selfish and keep it for me okay what happened next after gail what did i do next what were my movements oh i went and said hello to lovely joe and ewan her husband ewan at uh, pickle lily and they had lovely autumnal things in. They, I, I, got, I did get some footage of their autumnal uh, sort of mushroom themed bags and so on. I've got quite a few of Joe's little bags and things now. And they're really just adorable. I use them, I've got one of her little notions pouches that I use as a notions pouch. And then I've got another one that I use in the car to keep my hand sanitizer and stuff in. And so it's there every day. And she gave me a little present. It was so beautifully wrapped. I ripped it open at lunchtime. <laughs> So it's a little, cute little um, drawstring pouch and it, it's got a little frog on it. There he is and he's on the back there as well and I love frogs and it's got a little dog charm. Little cute little, is that a corgi? Is it? That looks like a corgi to me. And then in here, this is such a good idea for just a little gift. I've got two little handmade uh, lavender pouches. Lovely, they'll go under my pillow I think. And then a little point, point protectors. Isn't that lovely? Oh, so chuffed with that. Thank you, Joe. So that was from Joe Pickle Lily, who you will have seen on the footage from earlier today. Then from there, I went round and I saw Ducky Darlings, Hayley, and I said hello to Hayley. And then Emma and Sarah arrived and shortly after, so did Nancy from Nixit Pappy. So we all went and had a sit down, at which point, uh, Nancy very naughtily whipped out some gifts. Uh, I won't show you everything she got me, but I will show you this beautiful yarn that is from very near where she lives in Canada. It's a local to her dyer and it's Turtle Pearl, which is it's got the most cute little logo. Turtle Pearl. 
and does it say where it's at? and oh the yarn's called Gatineau Fall which Gatineau I believe is a place and fall for autumn so it's an autumnal colourway it's a sock set this yarn has been dyed to be self-striping. Both strands were dyed together. This will create matching socks that can easily be knit two at a time. For matching socks, ensure you start from the same end of each ball. Um, so I think it's two lots of 50 grams and then enough for the, um, you know, a contrast yarn as well, which is just beautiful. That is a beautiful brown color. Honestly, really, really love this. Really looking forward to seeing how this knits up in stripes. So that was a gorgeous gift from Nancy all the way from Canada and it's just so precious so thank you Nancy for that and she also gave me one of her little stitch markers which I'm gonna have to try and get to sit right way round and then this is Nancy's card so if you want to go and check out her podcast it's lovely she's a really really prolific knitter and maker she gets she makes so many lovely things Look at that, she's so professional. She's got a little QR code and everything. Do I need a QR code? That's amazing. So we had a cup of tea and we all sat down. And then at some point after that, we had lunch and I bumped into the girls. Oh, I was so excited to meet them. I really think I might have just spent all day making a total fool of myself. I think I just gabbled and gabbled and gabbled at people. And sometimes I just kept talking. Like, blah, 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 blah. Just, I'm such a dork. But we met um, Tracy and Kirsty from the Woolen Wishes podcast. Now, I'm sure I'm sure you've probably heard of them by now, but if not, go and check out the Woolen Wishes podcast. They podcast together. They're sister, sisters-in-law. Uh, and it's lovely. They always do a really lovely long podcast and they, they make the most amazing things and they do spinning and crochet and knitting and everything. It's it's amazing. Anyway, they've got a, a new uh, enamel pin and they gave me one of their pins. And it says, thank you for supporting our podcast. And it's the Wool and Wishes pin. So, oh, I just love that. So thank you, ladies, for that. I'm really, really pleased. Just going to adjust how I'm sitting and have a sip of Prosecco. At some point, Gaynor arrived as well, who I'm sure you've seen. Um, and that's when things took a turn because I was in, I, I went to the threshing barn, as I said. Now I talked to a lot more people. Sorry, just having another sip of my Prosecco. I talked to a lot more people and then Gaynor arrived and eventually we moved on to the second part. So there are two big buildings at the Southern, uh, Southern Wall Show. So you have the grandstand which is the first building you come to. Then you have a slightly smaller building, which is the Berkshire stand. And they're both stuffed full of uh, amazing vendors and there's plenty of room to move around. I would say at the Southern Wall Show, the food and drink provision is a bit rubbish. I, I know the organizers probably would say the same um, and that's to do with the venue and not the organizers. Um, they just don't put on enough um, you know, for the amount of people that go. But we did manage, there was there was a, enough different places to go, especially in the Berkshire stand. So we were able to easily get like lemon drizzle cake and a cup of tea and some water without really having to queue. Uh, that worked really well. And there's loads of places to sit. So I bought a packed lunch and, it, and so did everybody else. And we could just sit and eat it in numerous places, either on the grandstand steps or out on the picnic tables. So that was really, really nice. But we made it to the Berkshire stand because I really wanted to go and say hello to Almus, a witchy crafty lady. I'm just going to adjust my knees before I start creaking. Because, now I didn't take this with me, uh, but uh, a year ago when I went to the Southern Wall Show, Almus very kindly took the time to show me how to use, uh, show, show me techniques for how to use a drop spindle. And she really did take the time and it's busy when you're at a yarn show so it was really nice of her to do that and a year on and a lot of practice later <laughs> I've actually managed to spin a whole little bit of yarn there's probably not even 20 grams here but I've spun it and it actually doesn't look half bad it doesn't look half decent but it doesn't look half bad now you have to excuse the fact that some of that yarn on the outside is a bit lighter I accidentally started spinning a lighter coloured fibre <laughs> 
but I didn't take this along to show her but I wanted to go along and say thank you for showing me and you sparked that interest and I've, I've really enjoyed learning how to drop a spindle however oh and I also bought last year from Almus the most gorgeous fluff which I might have here I'm gonna knock the camera on oh, now obviously I know it's not called fluff <laughs> it's fibre specifically Superwash Polworth 98 grams I mean look at that how beautiful is that I mean even if I didn't spin like basically what I've done for the last year is look at it and go that's pretty and then be too scared to kind of spin it so I've got this to spin and I felt like now I'd accomplished this I could maybe move on and do this but the thought of spinning 98 grams when I was so slow doing this kind of uh intimidated me a bit so anyway i said hello to almas and we had a nice chat and then i went to the threshing barn as i said because i wanted to have a little look at the um the nano the electric eel nano which is like a miniature little electric spinner guess what i did i mean i have to say the people i was with were no help whatsoever because i went and had a look at the electric nanos and i was like oh, they're 140 pounds for the little one i was like yeah i don't know it's quite a big purchase i'm not sure and every single person i was with said yeah you should buy that <laughs> not one of them went be sensible don't do that they all went yeah you need to buy that so peer pressure i went and bought one so from the threshing barn and they sell all kinds of um weaving and spinning and other things there they are they had loads of uh, wheels and things that you could try and they took the time to show me how to use it and I had a couple of goes and they showed me the technique and I just fell in love with it it's just so much more streamlined I don't have to stop and start and stop and start so I bought one so I've got my box it's here and I've got my little nano which is here <laughs> And I've got all my bits and bobs here. So it plugs in by USB. So I've got a USB plug, so it can just plug into the mains. Or if you want to take it out and about, make it portable, you can plug it into a certain voltage of charger. Uh, so I'll, I will do a bit of investigating for that. And I am really looking forward to this because I'm a real newbie spinner. I really liked the flow of it. I really liked how it worked. I'm not, they, they have very small bobbins, which doesn't bother me because I am new to it. And if I do get caught up in it, I'll, you know, and I'll become obsessed or something, then I'll know it's worth investing in a larger um, e-spinner. But I'm so happy with this. I cannot wait to spend some time tomorrow getting to know it and, and playing with it and spinning up the beautiful fibre. So that's another rabbit hole, isn't it? I didn't mean to come on here and wrap it on for as long as I have. I've got more as well. So that's my big purchase. And I'm, do you know what? I have zero regrets about that. I'm so excited. And it takes up, like literally the whole lot is like this. It takes up no room. So I have no short regrets about bringing something into my house that's going to cause clutter. This is going to fit really easily into my yarn cupboard. And I think um, little eel, electric eel, Nano and me are going to be very good friends. So also in the Berkshire stand was Bird Street Yarn. Uh, so we went and said hello to John and to Claire. Uh, that was really lovely to see them. And uh, they're just they're just so lovely. They're just such nice humans. And everyone at a yarn show, everyone I bumped, by the way, I bumped into loads of people today. Loads of people took the time to come and say hello. And it was so, so lovely to meet you. I need to say a particular hello to Dee, who was just the most spectacular woman. And your daughter was just so lovely coming with you to the yarn show. And your friend, happy birthday and happy birthday month for August to you, Dee. It was so lovely to meet you. And yeah, I'm sorry I didn't bump into you just before you left as well. So, uh, But I've met so many lovely people, so, so knowledgeable, so friendly. And I'm not good in crowds and things. And it just, I never come away from a yarn show feeling like awkward or bad. I know that I say awkward things and everything, but I always come away from a yarn show feeling like buoyed up and everything. So it was just, if you said hello, thank you. And it was lovely to meet you. I'm really rabbiting now. Uh, oh, 
one more thing so i went to it also in the berkshire stand i went to um the curated yarn company i got chatting to stevie who is the dyer behind the creative yarn com company so there's the uh, there's the logo and you probably got a flash of the yarn as well. So she let me choose a skein of yarn as a uh, prize for the Strictly Sock Along. This one, to me, looks, the way it's dyed, looks to me like it's gonna be micro striping. Don't take my word for it, but that's what it looks like to me. And it's called Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, which I love. It's a series that I really, really love. Um, oh, look at those colors, aren't they amazing? So she let me choose one as a, uh, Strictly Sock Along prize, which was really, really lovely of her. And you will have seen her stall in the footage before. So that's the Curated uh, Yarn Co. So that's another prize, the Strictly Sock Along. So I'm going to put that here with the um, James James Makes Yarn. Yarn. <laughs> so thank you for that, Stevie. And finally, on the way out, I stopped at Wensleydale Longwall, which was just always so lovely and... Yeah, they're just so funny. It was a perfect way to end the show on the way out was that lovely chat um, with them. I had, I had seen them earlier on as well, but oh, it was just lovely. So yeah, I just blasted through that like an absolute fiend, didn't I? So I don't think I've missed anything. If I have, I'll pop back on after I've edited to let you know. I am so hot and sweaty. I can literally feel sweat running down my back, which is not something you need to know. Uh, we need to go and pick up Lilia. Well, Dan needs to go and pick up Lilia, who's out with her friends at the cinema. It's National Cinema today. It's Cinema Day today, uh, which means all films, all cinemas, all formats all over England, the UK, I'm not sure, are £3. So they've gone to the O2. I think they went to see something in 3D. Amazing. The O2, by the way, is only like 15 minutes drive up the road. That's why they're there. They could get a bus there. So Dan's going to go and pick her up. And then he's going to treat us to Indian takeaway. Perfect way to end the day. So thank you if I met you today. Uh, everybody I met today was fascinating, wonderful, friendly, interesting, knowledgeable, um, uh, talented, amazing people. And I hope you all found exactly what you were looking for. And if you went back the next day, I'm very jealous. <laughs> and please make sure you tag me on Instagram. Uh, if you post anything about it, I would love to see your purchases or any photos that you took. So thank you for watching this slightly uh, manic vlog and um, I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> I really shouldn't film videos whilst drinking. It doesn't go well.